ज्ञानशलाकय चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सह गन रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दिव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदान सह गन ललिता श्री विशाकांश नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधर शिवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम टू द श्रीमद भागवतम थीमैटिक सीरीज we have been discussing the second thematic series which is the six questions of the sages so i'll just recap uh, what we have discussed up till now we began the series uh, in two sessions in the last to last classes and <clears throat> we did not have few classes i know that because we had some other engagements so after uh, <clears throat> the sages of naimisharanya give a seat to sudgo swami they glorify him as anaga akyatan aditan vedavad ved vidam shreshta swami and sigdasya then they put for this first question pumsa <clears throat> ekanta shraya what is the most beneficial for humanity because the reason is prayana alpayush sabya kalavasmi nidajana that is the reason so that's why it was a <clears throat> and what is the <clears throat> essence of scriptures tell us the essence of the scriptures this is the second question they put and uh, it will come up in the answer as the essence of scriptures is to practice bhakti and tell us <clears throat> the purpose of krishna's appearance from devaki so this was uh, the third question put forth by the sages after speaking this third question the sages uh they express yesse avataro that means that lord's avatar as krishna which they have spoken in the 12th verse uh is for the shemaya and bhavaya for the liberation and material prosperity of all living beings so you should describe that arasya anuvarnitam to us we who are eager to hear and this is where we had uh, completed our discussion on verse 13 so they express the desire to hear krishna katha so now uh we will go to text 14 text 14 
आपन्न संसृष्टि घोरा यम विवशो गृणन तत साध्यो विमुच्यते यदिपेति स्वयं भय हूज नेम यम विच फ्यूर पर्सनिफाइड फ्यूर्स यदिपेति स्वयं भय इमीडिएटली लिबरेट्स तत साध्य विमुच्यते इमीडिएटली इट लिबरेट्स हेल्पलेस पर्सन विवशो गृणन afflicted by the terrors of material existence apanna samsrutim ghora so uh, verse 12 spoke about you know the purpose of lord krishna's descent as a son of devaki and we would like to hear uh, yes avataro we like to hear about this avatar of krishna which is shemaya cha bhavaya cha now the lords holy name the glories of the lord's holy name have been spoken the lord's avatar you know is shemaya how it is because the lord also manifest in the form of his name so what is the glory of the lord's holy name is being expressed by the sages of nemisharanya in this verse commentary by shila prabhupad <clears throat> Prabhupada speaks about the potency of how the Lord and the Holy Name are non-different. Vasudev, Lord Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the supreme controller of everything. There is no one in creation who is not afraid of the rage of the Almighty. Yet Bhivati, great asuras like Ravana, Hiran, Kashyapu, Kamsa, and others who were very powerful living entities were all killed by the personality of Godhead. and the almighty vasudev has empowered his name with the powers of his personal self so this is the potency of the holy name abhinnatvam nama nami everything is related to him and everything has its identity in him it is stated here in that the name of krishna is feared even by the fear personified yad bhibeti swayam bhayam and vishnu chakra takur in his commentary makes it more clear when we go to his commentary this indicates that the name of krishna is not different from krishna abhinnatvam nama nami therefore the name of krishna is as powerful as lord krishna himself so my question to you all is who is more powerful krishna or his holy name who is more powerful or who is more merciful krishna or his holy name anyone raise your hands yes sunita mata ji hari krishna dhanavat pranam prabhu ji a krishna's name is more merciful okay what is the reason because uh, by uh, chanting krishna's name krishna appears in front and gives mercy yes that's one and krishna will not come in the heart where the heart is contaminated filled with unlimited impressions but in the form of holy name he can come clean the heart and then krishna can enter so krishna refuses to come but the holy name is so merciful that in the form of nama we can access him it, it is nama who will purify our heart and when the heart is purified then krishna will appear so that's why in that sense the holy name is more merciful than krishna there is no difference at all anyone therefore can take advantage of the holy names of lord shri krishna even in the midst of the greatest dangers the transcendental name of krishna even though uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstances can help one obtain freedom from the hurdle of birth and death even uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstances any classic example from the shastra you know uttered unconsciously or force of circumstances yes sunita mata ji hari krishna uh, prabhu ji the example of ajamil 
unconsciously yes. after Krishna's name. Yeah, Ajamal, out of fear, when he saw the Amrutas, in the force of those circumstances, he called out his son, Narayan. That is Sanket. So, Vishwana Chakra Thakur in his uh, commentary will make it uh, clear because Vishwana Chakra Thakur uh, uh, writes commentary to both these two verses. So, that time you know, we will see both the verses. So, now the next verse, the sages are speaking about uh, they spoke about the glory of uh, hearing Krishna Leela in the form of Yasyavatara Shemaya. Then what is the glory of the holy name? Now in this verse, they speak about the glory of his pure devotees. And then they recite this verse. Yadpad samshaya suta punaya prashamayanaha sadhya punantya pasrishta Swardhunya apo nusevaya. Whose devotees, Munaya, haven't taken shelter of his lotus feet, yad paad samshaya, and having fixed their mind in the Lord, prashaya manaya. Immediately purify others, sadhya punanti. So these devotees, they are 100% taken shelter of the Lord. And their minds are fixed in the Lord. Such devotees can immediately purify others of all sins. Oh, this is uh, of the next verse translation. It was not properly done. This is next verse. Just by their thinking of the devotees, whereas the waters of the Ganga, Swardhunya Apa, Purify only by contact, upasvrishta and direct service, anusevaya. Commentary by Prabhupada on this. Pure devotees of the Lord are more powerful than the water of the sacred river, Ganges. This is the potency of the pure devotees. One can derive spiritual benefit out of prolonged use of Ganges water. But one can be sanctified at once by the mercy of the pure devotee of the Lord. So where is this at once mentioned here? The verse? Anyone knows where it is mentioned at once the pure devotees can purify? Pirendra Yadav Prabhuji, yes? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, it is Sadhya Prabhu. Sadhya? Punanti, Sadhya. Punanti means Sadhya purify. Punanti. Yes, Sadhya Purnanti. Yes. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that any person, regardless of birth, as Shudra, woman, or merchant, can take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and by so doing can return to Godhead. Which verse of the Bhagavad Gita says this? Which verse of the Bhagavad Gita? Lakshmi Narsuman Prabhuji. Triya Vaishya Tata Shudra Stepi Anti Param. Param Yes. Famous verse. To take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord means to take shelter of the pure devotees. Please mark this. The pure devotees whose only business is serving are honored by the names Prabhupada and Vishnupad which indicate that such devotees to be representatives of the lotus feet of the Lord. So now Prabhupada is, you know, in this commentary is, uh, which part of the verse he is quoting here? Which line of the verse here? <clears throat> which line of the verse is he speaking? Anyone? Abhay Inge Proji. Proji, I didn't get the question. Can you please repeat once? Prabhupada is saying, I'll just show the line. The pure devotees whose only business is serving are honored by the names Prabhupada and Vishnupada, which indicate such devotees to be the representative of the lotus feet of the Lord. So which line of the verse is Prabhupada speaking about? 
it is path 1 2 3 4 so which line of the verse is Prabhupada now commenting on anyone else Yes, Lakshmi Narsiman Prabhuji. I think it's Yad Pada Samshraya. Yeah, it's Yad, Yad Pada Samshraya. Pure devotees have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. And they have fixed their minds on it also. <clears throat> Anyone, therefore, who takes the shelter of the lotus feet of a pure devotee by accepting the pure devotee as a spiritual master can be at once purified. Such devotees of the Lord are honored equally with the Lord because they are engaged in the most confidential service of the Lord for they deliver out of the material world the fallen souls whom the Lord wants to return home back to Godhead. Such pure devotees are better known as vice lords according to revealed scriptures. The sincere divide, disciple of the pure devotee considers the spiritual master equal to the Lord, but always considers himself to be the humble servant of the servant of the Lord. So the disciple should accept the pure devotee equal to the Lord. That is, you know, Saksha Dharitvena Samastha Shastra. Because he is a representative of the lotus feet of the Lord. And he has taken complete shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. This is pure devotional path. This is that path. Oh, I'm surprised how Vishnu Chakra Thakur's purports are not uh, mentioned here. Oh, all three together are 14, 15 and 16. Okay. So, okay, let's just stay together only then. Hmm. Because Vishnu Chakratakur gives purport to all the three. <laughs> now, after glorifying, <laughs> uh, after putting forth this question that, you know, we want to hear about uh, why did Krishna make his appearance and his, you know, avatar is for the Shema and Bhavaya, verse 13. We want to hear the avatar Leela of specifically Krishna. And this is the potency of his holy name, which is described in Apanna Samskritim Ghorim, Ghorim, and then Ghoran. And then this is the potency of his pure devotees. Then they ask a rhetoric question Who is that person who will not hear? And they put this question Kova Bhagavatas Tasya Punya Shloke Dekarmanaha Shuddhi Kamo Na Shunayad Yasha. Kali malapaham. What person, Kova, desiring satisfaction of his intelligence, Shuddhi Kamo, will not hear the glories. Hear, Na Shunayat Yasha of the Lord Bhagavatasya, whose actions are praised by reputed persons. Punya Shlokedya Karmana. And which uh, destroy all sins, Kali malapaham. That somehow had gone in the previous verse, that translation. Because these translations are uh, based on Vishwanath Chakra Thakur's uh, translation. Now, Prabhupada in this verse. The age of Kali is the most condemned age due to its quarrelsome feature. Kali Yuga is so saturated with vicious habits that there is a great fight at the slightest misunderstanding. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service of the Lord who are without any desire for self-aggrandizement and who are freed from the effects of free to actions and dry philosophy speculations are capable of getting out of the estrangements of this complicated age. That means those who are practicing pure devotional service. Uttama Bhakti definition Prabhupada is giving here. The leaders of the people are very much anxious to live in peace and friendship, but they have no information of the simple method of hearing the glories of the Lord. So the most simple method to live in peace and prosperity is to every day sit and hear the glories of the Lord. On the contrary, such leaders are opposed to the propagation of the glories of the Lord. 
in other words the foolish leaders want to completely deny the existence of the lord in the name of secular state such leaders are enacting various plans every year but by the insurmountable intricacies of the material nature of the lord all these plans for progress are being constantly frustrated they have no eyes to see that their attempts at peace and friendship are failing but here is a hint to get over the hurdle if you want actual peace we must open the road to understanding of the supreme lord krishna and glorify him for his various virtuous activities as they are depicted in the pages of the shrimad bhagavatam punya shlok karmadya that is the line i think <clears throat> Yeah, punya shloke dia karma. His activities are, you know, uh, praised by the reputed persons, and they purify also. Okay, so that is Prabhupada's commentary ends. Now Vishnu Chakra Thakur gives the commentary to fourteen to sixteen because all these three verses are connected. So in fourteen, Aparna Samskritim Ghoram was mentioned. The way some the the phrase Samskritim Ghoram, terrible material life, vivasha, helplessness, and sadhya, immediately indicates persons like Ajamel. So I'd ask this question also. Prabhupad also mentions there, but he doesn't indicate it is Ajamel, but it is Ajamel. By the utterance of even one name of the Lord, fear at its root, Swayam Bhayam. Like Swayam Bhagwan, the form of Mahakal causing destruction of the universe becomes afraid. So Mahakal also becomes afraid who are takes even one name of the Lord. So here name also means pure name. Please remember that. What then to speak of death and Yama in charge of death? So if Mahakal also becomes afraid, then what to speak of death and Yama? Yamraj, who is in charge of death, and what to speak of having fear of lesser beings such as servants of Yama? What to speak of then the Yamadutas? Those who take the shelter of the Lord's two feet, the devotees, purify the people of the contamination of ignorance immediately, just by people remembering those devotees. So here, Vishnu Chakra Thakur is commenting on the next verse, that is Yad Pad Samshaya Sutta. Next verse, that is verse fifteen. Uh, How much more purification will take place by seeing, touching, or serving those devotees? So here the point is, just by remembering the pure devotees, we get purified. Then what to speak of just seeing those pure devotees, touching those pure devotees, serving those pure devotees? This is understood because of a similar statement later. He sham sam smarana tum sam sadhya shuddhanti vaygraha kim punar darshana sparsha pad saochasana dibhi. This Parishit Maharaj is mentioning simply by our remembering you. He sham sam smarana tum sam. Our houses become instantly sanctified. Sadhya shuddhanti vaygraha. And what to speak of seeing you, Kim Punar Darshana, touching you, Sparsha, washing your feet, Pada Saucha, and offering you a seat in our home, Asana Devi. So just by remembering, we get immediately purified. Then what to speak, how much purification will happen if we see, touch, and serve? And this, uh, Parikshit is, uh, is speaking when Sukhde Goswami arrives in that assembly. It should be understood that the water of the Ganges purified by their direct presence, having been brought from a distant place. Otherwise, there would be contradiction to the statements. Mukti stvat darshanat eva na jane snana snana jam palam. Liberation comes from seeing you. I do not know the result of taking baths. So I think, I don't know from which the statement is quoted. Also, it is said, Swardhunya darshanat eva sadhunam just maranat api muktir. One can attain liberation by seeing the Ganga, 
and by remembering the devotees. So, to attain liberation, you have to go and actually see the Ganga. But, that same thing, <clears throat> by remembering, you need not see that devotee, pure devotee. By remembering, you can attain that same liberation. This is the potency of the pure devotees. Thus, the superiority of the devotee is indicated. I hope the point is clear. The water of the Ganga flowing from the Lord's feet by having a relation with the Lord actually does purify, but being touched, upasrishta, touched upon, you have to touch the Ganga, then it will purify. Sevaya means actions such as worship, obeisances, etc. Or it can mean by respect in general. So we have to do Ganga Seva in the form of worshipping Ganga, offering obeisances to Ganga or offering respect. So, but by just remembering the pure devotees, we can get purified. And that too, we get purified by serving Ganga after a prolonged time. Whereas the pure devotees, by remembering sadhya, immediately we get purified. The particle nu certainly indicates a difference from the previous statements. On the other hand, <clears throat> swardhunya apas, this is a no, grammatical thing. Now the 16th verse, Vishnu Chagatakur is explaining. Shuddhi kama means one who desires satisfaction of the intellect. Because it was previously said, Enatma Suprasiddhati, by which the intelligence is satisfied. <clears throat> Yasha, fame of the Lord, means his extraordinary actions, such as his victory over Shiva, Indra, Brahma, and others, and his pastimes, such as the Ras. Who would not like to hear the fame, Yasha, of the Lord, it's like his wonderful activities which he does? So that uh, completes Vishwanathagari Thakur commentary. Any questions up till now? Yes, Abhayenge Prabhuji. One second. Yes. Yeah, Prabhuji, uh, in that fourth, fourteenth verse uh, explanation with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, uh, there is a reference of Mahakal. Here, Mahakal is referred as uh, what is Shiva's uh, this thing or uh... Mahakal. I think so. It is Shiva only because he is uh, uh, um, I think it is must be Shiva only. I also have not uh, the Kala Bhairavi deities, you know, the, uh, are of this universe. But the aggregate of all the universes <clears throat> that is like the Mahakal, you know. So it is referring to that deity. And then right. within the universe there are, you know, Yamraj. You know, and then there are Yamrat servants. So it is referring to that actually. Okay. So okay. I I am not so sure whether that Mahakal is Shiva. You know, uh, but uh, it is uh, one thing I am very clear is that it is not only that within the universe there is one uh, uh, deity, but the aggregate of all the universes. There is that uh, another supreme deity. So that it is referring to that Mahakal. Okay, thank you, thank you. Whether it is Shiva, I will just try to find out you know, who is Mahakal. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Prabhuji. Taurapa Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dandot Pranam Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, my question is also related to a similar point. Here we said that even a one name we utter, even right from Mahakal to Yamaduta, and his uh, Yamadut and Yamaduta servants are afraid of it. Yeah. What did one name, uh, Nam, uh, Namaparad, Namabhas, or Shuddhanam? In what yeah, mode I, that one name has to be? I I mentioned that that name means pure name. And that's why uh, even Namabhas utterance, because Ajamil chanted Namabhas. You know, he also did not have the knowledge 
that uh, this name I am taking is not uh, of my son, but it is of Narayan. So, one should basically be free from offenses. So, that is what is the indication. Ajamil chanted helplessly. He had committed unlimited sins and he was uh, led a very sinful life. But uh, there were no offenses. Uh, and that's why that name was helplessly taken. And that's why that is the glory of Namabas, even without faith taken, that um, he became free from the bandhan, samsara bandhan. And then he got the sambandhagyan and then with that faith, he started taking the name. So it's basically, you know, uh, chanting the name with faith that the holy name is non different from the Lord. So it can refer to Namabas, but specifically also Shuddha Nam. I hope it is clear. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so let's now go to the next verses. So after, uh, you can see the whole flow, after the 12th question, uh, 13th verse spoke about, uh, you know, we want to hear this avatar's pastimes, Krishna avatar pastimes, because they are Shemaya Bhavacha. Krishna, potency of the holy name is glorified in 14th verse. The potency of his pure devotees then they ask a rhetoric question. Who is that person who will not hear these glories which can satisfy the self and which can destroy all sins? And then, Yasya Vataro was there in verse number 13. Now, Tasya Karmani Udharani. So that Yasya is connected to this Tasya here. Please remember that Yasya is connected to this Tasya here. Tasya Karmani Udharani Parigitani Surabhi Bruhina Shaddadhana Nam Leelaya Daddada Kala. Please tell us, Bruhina, full of faith, Shaddadhana Nam. We are full of faith about the activities of the Lord who supports the form of all avatars by His will. Leelaya Daddada Kala. So, uh, this avatari Krishna supports all forms of avatars, Kala. The avatar, the, you know, uh, avatars are called as Kala. So he supports even Mahavishnu for creating this universe. So the Purush avatars have been asked, question has been asked here. Please tell us the pastimes. Now they want to hear the pastimes uh, of Krishna. But first they want to hear the pastimes of Krishna who performs uh, in his Kala expansion as Purush avatars. Mahavishnu, Garbhadaksha Vishnu and Shiradaksha. So the creation pastimes have been asked question here. <clears throat> activities of killing of demons and bestowing the highest bliss to his devotees. Taska Karmani Udharani, which are glorified by sages. Parigitani Surabhi. Describe the pastimes of Krishna who has all avatars within him. So this specifically is activities of the Purush avatars of the Lord. I hope you know the verse is clear. Let's go to Prabhupada's commentary. The personality of Godhead is never inactive as some less intelligent person suggest. His works are magnificent, magnificent and magnanimous, especially his work of creation through the Purushavatars. His creations, both material and spiritual, are all wonderful and contain all variegatedness. So the creation of the Purushavatars, of the creation of the material world pastimes is being discussed. They are described nicely by such liberated souls as Srila Narada, Vyasa, Palmiki, Devala, Asita, Madhva, Chaitanya, Ramanuja, Vishnu Swami, Nimbarka, Sridhar, Vishwanath, Baldeva, Bhaktivinoda Tagur, Siddhant Sarasati, and many other learned and self realized souls. So, proper doesn't include his name out of his genuine humility because after Bhakti Siddhant Sarasati, it should come. And then he just mentions uh, many other learned and self realized souls. So when Prabhupada is making this statement, which part of the verse is he commenting on? Raise your hands. Which part of the verse is he commenting on? Or which line of the verse is commenting on? There are Pad 1, Pad 2, 3, 4. Tasya Karmani Udharani is Pad 1. Parigitani Surubi is Pad 2. Bruhina Shaddadana Nam is Pad 3. 
लीला या दत्तहता कला इस पाद पोत ये सब आएंगे प्रभु जी परी परी गीता नहीं सुरु भी एक्सेलेंट परी गीता नहीं सुरु भी परी गीता नहीं सुरु भी दिस क्रिएशंस बोथ मटेरियल एंड स्पिरिचुअल आर फुल ऑफ अपिलेंस ब्यूटी एंड नॉलेज बट द स्पिरिचुअल रेल्म इज मोर मैग्निफिसेंट ड्यू टू इट्स बीइंग फुल ऑफ नॉलेज ब्लिस एंड इटर्निटी सो द सृष्टि पास्ट टाइम्स ऑफ दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड आर ऑफ लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इवन फॉर साइंटिस्ट बट यू नो द रियल इज द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड वेयर देयर इज लाइफ ऑफ इटर्निटी ब्लिस एंड नॉलेज दैट प्रोपोज इज मेकिंग क्लियर द मटेरियल क्रिएशंस आर मैनिफेस्टेड फॉर सम टाइम as perverted shadows of the spiritual kingdom and can be likened to cinemas <laughs> they attract people of less intelligent caliber who are attracted by false things such foolish men have no information of the reality and they take it for granted that the false material manifestations is the all in all so the creation of the purusha avatars is the material manifestation So, Prabhupada, the right here in the purport is pointing out that ultimately, uh, uh, we should uh, be more interested in the spiritual manifestations. But ultimately, we have to study this in order to come out of the material world also. But more intelligent men, guided by sages like Vyas and Narad, know the eternal kingdom of God <coughs> is more delightful, larger, and eternally full of bliss and knowledge. The material universes are. एक पाद विभूति स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड इज थ्री पाद विभूति दोज हुर नॉट कन्वर्सेंट विद द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड हिज ट्रांसेंडेंटल रेल्म आर समटाइम्स फेवर्ड बाय द लॉर्ड इन हिज एडवेंचर्स एज इनकार्नेशन वेयर ही डिस्प्लेज द इटरनल ब्लिस ऑफ हिज एसोसिएशन इन द ट्रांसेंडेंटल रेल्म बाय सच एक्टिविटीज ही अट्रैक्ट द कंडीशन सोल्स ऑफ द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड some of these conditioned souls are engaged in the false enjoyment of material senses and others are simply negating their real life in the spiritual world the karmis are enjoying senses the gyanis are negating their real life in the spiritual world these less intelligent persons are known karmis or fruity workers and gyanis Or the dry mental speculators. So I mentioned here that Prabhupada is here referring to karmis, and the, those are negating their real life in the spiritual world are gyanis. So Prabhupada makes that statement. But above these two classes of men is the transcendentalist devotees, known as satvata, or the devotee who is busy neither in rampant material activity nor with mental material speculation. He is engaged in the positive service of the Lord. and thereby he derived the highest spiritual benefit unknown to the karmis and the yanis as the supreme controller of both the material and spiritual worlds the lord has different incarnations of unlimited categories so the first category is the purusha avatars then will come the leela avatars after the purusha avatars there is a gunavant guna avatars the manvantara avatars and then there are the leela avatars incarnations like brahma rudra manu prithu and vyas are his material qualitative incarnations guna avatars but his incarnations like lama narsimha vara and vamana are his transcendental incarnations so these are his leela avatars lord shri krishna is the fountain head of all incarnations and he is therefore the cause of all causes so lord shri krishna is avatari Prabhupada, right? Established this year. Okay, very interesting purport of Prabhupada. Vishnu Chakravarti. Karmani refers to the activities of killing demons in common with other avatars. Udharani, generous means fulfilling the desire of his of the devotees. Kala Daddhata means for he who supports the forms of the avatars. the constant presence of these avatars during the time when krishna appears indicates the completeness of krishna as avatari so propad also established this point vishnu chakra thakur is also establishing the same any questions on text uh, 17 any questions any clarifications on text 17 text 18 
अथ आख्या हरेर्धीमन अवतार कता शुभा लीला विदत स्वैरिम ईश्वर सत्मया ओ इंटेलिजेंट सेज धीमन नरेट अथ आख्या द नॉन मटीरियल स्टोरीज ऑफ अवतार अवतार कथा शुभा of the supreme lord krishna harer who performs his eternal pastimes independently leela vidhatata swayam by his yog maya potency ishwarasya atma maya so this is question number 5 describe the stories of avatars activities of the leela avatars of the lord so the text 17 uh, is uh, purusha avatars with mahamaya that is a contact with krishna creation with the mahamaya through the purusha avatars but the leela avatars are atma maya or the yoga maya potency so here it is made very clear the purusha avatars uh, make contact with mahamaya and the creation happens so that is a purusha avatar the creation past times and uh, the incarnations which come and perform leela they are completely transcendental they are all yoga maya past times so ishwarasya atma maya it becomes very specific and clear here that it is the story of leela avatars here propad again propad uh, gives a very generic understanding here for the creation maintenance and destruction of the material worlds the supreme personality of god had himself appears in many thousands of forms of incarnations and the specific adventures found in this transcendent forms are all auspicious shubha they are all shubha but those who are present during such activities and those who hear the transcendental narration of such activities are benefited so only two points proper makes vishnu chakatagar shubha means non material the lord performs past times in the present which are actually eternal in nature by his yoga maya potency atma maya so you know the sages have asked now the fourth and the fifth question describe the purusha avatar past times the leela avatar past times there are unlimited avatars krishna rama vamana vara all these past times are they ready to hear <clears throat> all these so the sages express that will not be satisfied you keep on narrating because we have knowledge uh, we have rasagyana so we will relish sometimes a class goes on for one hour devotees get tired if it continues for another two hours we might say we are satisfied enough <laughs> but will not be satisfied so that they expressing their enthusiasm here in this verse vayam tu na vitripyam uttam shloka vikrame yat shunvatam rasagyana swadu sadu pade pade we are not fully satisfied vayam tu na vitripyam with the exploits of the lord whose fame is the highest uttam shloka vikrame or this his wonderful actions of creation and his wonderful actions of leela avatars performing in this world like ram building the bridge krishna lifting the gordan because at every moment pade pade whose exploits become more relishable swadu swadu for the hearers of who have knowledge of rasa yat shunvatam rasagyanam rasagyanam because we have rasagyanam we want to hear all these wonderful pastimes so suta don't worry we are here <clears throat> you continuously narrate all these leelas purusha avatar leelas and <clears throat> avatar leelas raupad raupad purport uh, uh, he brings out the difference between mundane stories and transcendental pastimes there is a great difference between mundane stories fiction or history and the transcendental pastimes of the lord the histories of the whole universe contain reference to the pastimes of the incarnations of the lord the ramayan the mahabharat and the puranas are history of bygone ages <laughs> recorded in connection with the pastimes of the incarnation of the lord and therefore they remain fresh even after repeated 
hearing. So this is the first difference. They are always fresh. For example, anyone may read Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam repeatedly throughout his whole life. And yet he will find in them new light of information. So here is the difference. Mundane news is static, whereas transcendental news is dynamic. In as much as spirit is dynamic and matter is static. So this mundane news is static. Try it out. Please try it out. Do an experiment. Today's newspaper, you read it, right? Some fresh news, what has happened yesterday or early in the morning. And you read in the morning the Bhagavad Gita. Next day morning, you again, previous day's newspaper, not the next day's, previous same that newspaper, again you read that. Third day, also you read that. And you read the Bhagavad Gita also. Fourth day, you'll find this happened because it is static. Whereas, because uh, Bhagavad Gita is completely spiritual, it is you know dynamic and it is consciousness, pure Krishna consciousness. So the consciousness gets keeps on elevating and you'll find newer and newer information. So that is the difference between Monday news and transcendental pastimes. This is the first. Those who have developed a taste for understanding the transcendental subject are never tired of hearing such narrations. Rasagyanam, those who have different, they are not satisfied. Vayam nat vitrupyam. One is quickly satiated by mundane activities, but no one is satiated by transcendental devotional activities. So this is the second difference. There is satiation in mundane activities and there is no satiation. Uttam Shlok indicates a literature which is not meant of nisayans. Mundane literature is in the mode of darkness, ignorance, whereas transcendental literature is quite different. Transcendental literature is above the mode of darkness and its light becomes more illuminous with progressive reading and realization of the transcendental subject matter. So here the third difference Prabhupada brings, that is Uttama Shloka. Uttama. Tama is darkness, mundane is darkness, Uttama is, it is above darkness. It is light and it becomes more and more luminous with progressive reading. So this is the third difference he brings out. The so-called liberated persons are never satisfied by the repetition of the words Aham Brahmasmi. Such artificial realization of Brahman becomes hackened and so to relish real pleasure, they turn to the narrations of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sir, Prabhupada is here taking an opportunity to hammer the Mayavadis. Those who are not so fortunate turn to altruism and worldly philanthropy. Because these don't come in the parampara, they also cannot relish the Bhagavatam, even though they turn their pages to the Bhagavatam. This means Mahayavad philosophy is mundane, whereas the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam is transcendental. So Prabhupada, even uh, not only uh, the mundane uh, stories, but even he quotes that the philosophy of the Mayavadis is mundane. So Prabhupada uses that opportunity here. So I hope you are clear uh, with uh, this purport. So I would like to know uh, what are the differences Prabhupada brings out? The four differences or at least two, three who will narrate which we read in the purport. I want to know how many were attentively hearing. What are the differences between mundane stories and transcendental pastimes of the Lord? What are the differences Prabhupada brought out? Who will tell us? Who will tell us what are the differences between the two? Raise your hands. If you have heard it carefully, then you will be able to tell. Yes, Priya Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Danvar Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Danvar Pranam. Hare Krishna. Am I am able to hear. Please tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, as per my small understanding, uh, because I joined late also, uh, the mundane literature 
after hearing for a few number of times actually one gets tired cannot hear it but in case of transcendental the more you hear it the number of times the more the taste is relished rasa yes okay that's first second what else proper said and uh, the mundane literature always in the mode of darkness whereas the transcendental ones are in the shuddha sattva yes transform the person not the other way around yes and mundane news is static whereas transcendental news is dynamic okay excellent so let's go to vishnu chakra thakur commentary उत्तम श्लोक मीन्स ही हूज फेम और गुड क्वालिटीज आर द बेस्ट उत्तम और इट कैन मीन ही हू इज प्रेज बाय द बेस्ट पर्सन वी आर नॉट कंप्लीटली सैटिस्फाइड इन हियरिंग अबाउट द एक्सप्लॉइट ऑफ उत्तम श्लोक वी आर नॉट कंप्लीटली सैटिस्फाइड वै एम तू न वी डू नॉट कंसिडर दैट इट इज सफिशियंट give me more give me more of hearing you know it's not sufficient you keep on narrating all these past times in other words we are completely satisfied with whatever we have done in performing sacrifices and yoga because they were performing a yagya we are satisfied with that but we are not satisfied with hearing your krishna katha let us continue to hear about the activities of the lord in the form of purusha avatar past times and the leela avatars we want to continue to hear or the sentence can mean let others be satisfied but we are not vayam tu na vitrupyam we are not satisfied this is indicated by the word tu vayam tu tu we are not satisfied the meaning is this now this is a very interesting insight vishnu chakra thakur is saying in three ways one knows that one has had enough of something and is satisfied by sufficiency of quantity you know if you have a lot of quantity of food you know you will say i am trupt <laughs> enough <laughs> my belly is full trupt by lack of awareness of the taste suppose you have given some new item which you have not tasted before and you don't have rasa gyan rasa gyan here is not uh, uh, the rasa of uh, krish leela but the rasa of the tongue you know some kind of a item like specially i'm just giving an example of a, you know somebody gaming a uh, peas which were uh, uh, fried in uh, uh, mustard oil and you know this devotee has taste and uh, for those items and he said you taste this is very good and when i tasted it is bitter you know <laughs> It had some kind of a vague taste. <clears throat> I did not have the awareness and the knowledge of the taste. So you liked it. Take more, take more. I said, no, no, enough, enough. <laughs> I am trupt. I said, and by lack of relishing the object, so I did not relish that object, that uh, uh, peas which was roasted in uh, and fried in uh, mustard oil. So, so in three ways, we can know one had had enough. So you know, if karela, you don't like karela, and you. So karela is being put. You know, you will take a little and you don't like it, and you know they'll come again. No, no, no. I'm trupt enough, enough. You'll tell. So these are three ways. This verse, there is insufficiency for the hearer, shunvatam, because the exploits are not directly present, being present only as sound in the ether contacting the ear. So there is insufficiency for the shunvatam because. The exploits are, you know, they are not present. They are not uh, right now. Krishna is not happening, but we are only hearing it. Satisfaction is negated for a person who is not capable for appreciating the taste or rasa. For a person who is just like an animal. However, the sages have appreciation of rasa, rasa gyanam. So they have rasa gyanam. So that's why we are not satisfied. So we keep on narrating. but still they are not satisfied unlike chewed sugar cane which loses its taste and becomes detestable the topics of the lord are more excellent because of the increase in taste at every moment after tasting swadu swadu pade pade the sages have not lost taste but are still dissatisfied so this is you know transcendental you know 
rasa in hearing krishna katha <clears throat> pade pade it's, it's pada pada but it is put as pade pade at every moment okay text 20 kritavan kil karmani sa ramena keshava ati martyani bhagavan uda kapata manusha so they want to hear the transcendental narrations. Now in this verse, the sages of Neymar Sharanya are making it specific that they want to hear the pastimes of Krishna, which will come in the 10th canto. Of course, they wanted to hear all the pastimes of the Purusha avatars and the various Leela avatars, but they are expressing their eagerness of hearing specifically Krishna Katha. The Supreme Lord Krishna Keshav, Lord Keshav, Bhagavan Keshava, whose intentions remain concealed, Guda, because he is deceptive to mankind, Kapata Manusha, performed pastimes, Ati Martyani Kritavan Kila Karmani, with Balram, Sir Ramena. Commentary by Prabhupada. The doctrines of orthomorphism and zoomorphism are never applicable to Krishna or the personality of Godhead. So, orthomorpho means form. Artha means, you know, human being. <laughs> and zoo means animal, zoomorphism. So, there are the vara, the matsya, you know. So, these are not applicable to the Lord. <laughs> the theory that man becomes God by dint of penance and austerities is very much rampant nowadays, especially in India. Since Lord Rama, Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were detected by the sages and saints to be the person recorded as indicated in revealed scriptures, many unscrupulous men have created their own incarnations. This process of concocting an incarnation God has become an ordinary business, especially in Bengal. <laughs> Any popular personality with a few traits of mystic powers will display some feat of jugglery and easily becomes an incarnation of God by popular vote. Prabhupada says in India, gods are manufactured every day. Lord Krishna is not that type of incarnation. He was actually the personality of Godhead from the very beginning of his appearance. Kritavan Kilakarmani. He appeared before his so-called mother as a four-harmed Vishnu. Then at the request of, his, of the mother, he became like a human-like child and at once left her for another devotee at Gokul, where he accepted as the son of Nand Maharaj and Yashoda. <clears throat> Kritavan Kilakaramani Sir Amena Keshava. So Kritavan, <clears throat> his activities, Prabhupada is explaining. Srimil Rishi Baldev, the counterpart of Lord Sri Krishna, was also considered a human child born of another wife of Vasudev, Rohini. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that his birth and deeds are transcendental, that anyone who is so fortunate as to know the transcendental nature of his birth and deeds will at once become liberated and eligible to return to the kingdom of God. Janma karma chame divyam. So knowledge of the transcendental nature of the birth and deeds of Lord Sri Krishna is sufficient for liberation. In the Bhagavatam, the transcendental nature of the Lord Sri Krishna is described in nine cantos. And in the 10th canto, his specific pastimes are taken up. So the transcendental nature of the Lord is in nine cantos. Lord has Vara, Matsya, Kurma, Narsimha, Vamana, Rama. And then Lord has Avatari in the 10th canto. All this becomes known as one's reading of the literature progresses. It is important to note here, however, that the Lord exhibited his divinity even from the lap of his mother. And his deeds are all superhuman. Ati Martyani Bhagavan. He lifted the Gordon Hill at the age of seven. And that all these acts definitely prove him to be actually the supreme personality of Godhead. Yet due to his mystic covering, he was always accepted as an ordinary human child by his so-called father and mother and other relatives. Uda Kapata Manusha. <laughs> Whenever some Herculean task was performed by him, the father and mother took it otherwise. And they remained satisfied with unflinching filial love for their son. 
as such the sages on emissarin describe him as apparently resembling a human being but actually he is the supreme almighty personality of godhead udakapata manushya vishnuvar chakra thakur's commentary is very very interesting this verse clarifies activities of the lord though krishna's actions are human but he is brahman in human form his actions like lifting govardhan surpass the actions of humans no human being can perform this kind of actions those actions are impossible for other livings at that time thus his actions are described as beyond human ati martyani but the lord is hidden guda the reason is given he is deceptive to the human beings kapata manusha those who are kapata manusha you know he is deceptive he is hidden he is deceptive to materialistic persons like jarhasan by disguising himself as a brahmana to make a request in order to help his devotees he is deceptive with the spiritual devotees the gopis who are attracted to the sound of his flute by giving them instructions on proper conduct in order to increase the manifestation of prema since the bewilderment of the demons is because of their material ignorance and the bewilderment of the devotees like the gopis is because of their prema the lord does not actually cheat anyone he conceals himself in order to give instruction only the formation of kapata manusha follows you know some panini sutra <laughs> okay so that ends the commentary of uh, vishwanath chakra thakur so we'll stop here there are uh, three more verses now where the last question will be put 21 22 23 we will take next time and then we will begin the six answers any questions any clarifications up till now Okay, Virendra Yadav. There are two questions. Uh, Sunita Mataji, yes. Hi, Krishna Prabhuji. I wanted uh, an answer to a question re regarding uh, offenses in uh, chanting. Uh, the uh, type of chanting which involves jada and um, Lethargy, what we call the uh, yes, yes, it is uh, jada. Yeah, it's called a jada. Huh? Lethargy, inertia. Jada. Yeah. So it is a result of which aparad, Prabhuji? It is basically because of uh, ignorance, because of the tamaguna, the mind is lazy, and it is also because of lack of knowledge. Uh, of the nama tatva so these are anarthas and um, the more we get knowledge the more we uh, strive to you know uh, understand with that knowledge and chant that the lord is present in the holy name i should be very alert i should be very attentive i should chant with respect because when i'm taking the name it is you know the lord is present so it is lack of knowledge and due to the ignorance of uh, millions of lifetimes of uh, being associated in the mode of ignorance also so slowly slowly the more we attain sambandha gyan and with that sambandha gyan we chant then the more we can come out of this virendra yadav yes mata ji uh, one more uh, point i wanted to clarify Uh, doesn't the diet or lifestyle affect uh, this definitely definitely it affects one has to if one wants to come in the mode of goodness you know his lifestyle is the most important thing the kind of food he eats so you know an entire um, uh, propa you know in uh, the purport to uh, bhagavad gita kamesha krodha esha rajaguna samudvavam ki very emphatically states that here uh, he says that uh, therefore the mode of passion instead of being degraded to the mode of ignorance 
is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting. So there is had to be a prescribed method of living and acting. Our actions should be born in the mode of goodness. Our living should be in the mode of goodness. Our food should be in the mode of goodness. Then slowly, slowly we can come out of this ignorance. Otherwise, you know, uh, it is difficult to make progress uh, in spiritual path. Is it okay, Mataji? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Isn't it related to any Nama Parad? What is related to Nama Parad? No, I'm not getting your question. Does it include any Nama Parad in this case? Which what includes Nama Parad? No, you have ignorance and that's why you're not able to, you know, chant the holy name with attention. So, uh, while taking the name, you will commit aparad. So, yes, you know, so that is because of ignorance. So, that ignorance has to be removed so that we chant attentively. Otherwise, if you're chanting in ignorance, then we commit more and more nama aparad. Is it clear or no? Yes, thank you, Prabhuji. Yes, Birendra Yadav Prabhuji, you have a question? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu Dhanbhat. Uh, Prabhu, I was just uh, uh, asking this uh, uh, good Kapat Manusha. So, yes. this Kapat Manusha, Prabhu, uh, can we take this way? We cannot say Krishna is Kapata, but we can, can we relate this? No, with... no Kapata Manusha is, you know, those who are deceptive. For him, he is good. So, can we relate this way? Can we relate this way? Yes, yes, definitely. You know, you come with deception. Right. And that's why Krishna also deceives you. Yes, yes, yes. So, when, when Sugriv sent Hanuman, who are these two? You know, maybe they are the spies of Bali. Go. So, Hanuman disguised himself as a Brahmana. And he came there. And then he asked, who are you? And then, you know, Ram said, you know, identify ourselves, Lakshman. And Lakshman, when he spoke about it, <coughs> so Ram, uh, Hanuman was astonished. Right from birth, I've been, you know, chanting your names. And why did I not recognize you? So then Ram said, you know, because you have taken a deceptive form of a Brahmana, that's why you could not see me. <laughs> so if we are deceptive, then the Lord similarly will deceive us. So he is deceptive to Jarasans in order to favor his devotees and is deceptive to the gopis, but that is out of prema. <laughs> right. Jarasans are in ignorance, you know, in, to increase the prema of his devotees. So that's why it's a very rasic understanding which uh, uh, Vishnu Chakatakur is giving. I hope it Thank is clear, you. right? Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Granthra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Hare Krishna.